Hey people, for this video we met with producer duo Superflu. We had to escape flying refrigerators, witnessed a very inspirational jam and production session, and attended a private live gig where they test the track from this recording session. Hey girls and boys, we are Superflu. Today we would like to produce a track from scratch with this nice gear and our sample pack. I start with uh, just jamming around with the beautiful Jupiter 6, uh, looking for a more modulated complex sound and then directly put it in one of my favorite samplers, it's the NN19 and then trying to find a rhythm, playing around with uh, some parameters like release time and, and now from the beginning it's important to have the bass drum to feel groove. So I love to work with this sample because I started with Reason back in the days. And I'm feeling super familiar with this. And I also love the filter in it. Now putting some echo on it. And then going further to another element. Just a hit from the same sample. I map an LFO to the start time. I love uh, to work with only one sample and try to get variations of it. I'm taking another sample from the pack. It's a bass I recorded with the SH5. And now I'm looking for a bass line for this track. And here we are. Sounds satisfying. Now I'm adding an envelope to the filter. I'm using a shaper box very often. Now I'm looking for a tom to give it a bit more groove. I'm using my tier 8 for this. And I'm going back to the first element and now I'm mapping it on my MIDI controller to jam more with it and to have more control of all the parameters. So now the loop sounds okay, feels right. Now I try to give um, the main rhythm a bit more grid with a decapitator. And I'm also using an auto pen. Okay, more jamming on the Juno 16. And now I use uh, recorded samples from uh, the Jupiter 6, uh, which are part of uh, the sample pack also. Loading it in a simpler, adding my distortion rack. This is a collection of all the distortion units in Ableton Live, but they are only distorting the high band, like an exciter. Okay, and I'm looking for a melody. Oh, I find it. That was fast, Felix. It's also a part of the sample pack. Just some stuff I recorded. And now I'm trying to put everything in the right order and in the right rhythm. So I'm using a lot of Valhalla Vintage, using this in parallel. I sometimes do this because I have more control over the effect, over the reverb tail and I can distort it. And this time I can equalize it make it more darker. Okay, I arranged the song very fast. We searched for the best sounding uh, scrap yard and I think we found it. And I'm now using some trash samples we recorded for this uh, sample pack. So it brings everything a bit to life. So 
I'm using a return effect, uh, which is also part of the sample pack. It's like an LFO reverb tail. I yeah, don't feel disturbed from my toothpick. I quit uh, smoke some months ago, so I need this now. Now I'm trying to add more trash samples. Just to get some more drum variation. And now it's a very important part. So I'm using the GRM tools freeze. It's a li like a granular sampler. The special thing about that is I can handle it with uh, my mouse very well, as you can see. The goal is to have some more atmosphere in it and some more movement. So this is really one of my favorite tools and I use it every time. Yeah, I think that's good. So normally if I'm arranging a track, we are sitting together talking about this, trying it out in a mix with other tracks. So now we can hear if that fits in our sets and if everything sounds nice. <laughs> 